Hey guys, this is Nick and today we have a very special laptop to take a look at. It's the Starlabs Starbook Mark V. And what sets it apart from other laptops is the fact that it doesn't use a Clevo or Tongfeng chassis. It's a custom designed aluminium chassis that Starlabs made themselves for this device specifically, compared to other manufacturers that offer a device using Linux out of the box, which generally just reuse Clevo or Tongfeng chassis and just put their components and assemble them themselves. So we're gonna take a look at this device and see how I like it. Okay, so first, the unboxing experience is pretty cool. You get a very minimalistic box that traces all the contours of the laptop on every side. Inside, the Ultrabook is inside a blue sleeve, a light blue sleeve to protect it. And you get a quick start guide as well, and that's it. The power brick and the cables are located in the main cardboard shipping box and not in the computer's box itself. Speaking of which, this power brick is really tiny. You can see it here, it's got a USB-C port and a USB-A one, so you can keep charging your stuff even while your laptop is charging, which I really like. By default, it comes with this braided blue cable, which is USB-C to very, very small barrel charger, but you can also fork for an outrageous 2.5 euros for a two meters braided cable, blue as well, for USB-C to USB-C charging because that laptop supports USB-C charging. Now seriously, 2.5 euros for a two meters USB-C to USB-C braided cable? The arrogance. So of course they gave me a US power brick, which means that I had to come in with my own super ugly adapter for uh, making sure that I could plug it in. That's disgusting but at least it worked and I could charge the laptop. And I really kind of like the, the snappy things that we cannot do here in, the, in Euroland. It's nice. Now when you open the laptop, you get that same light blue cloth to protect the keyboard, which will also serve as a cleaning cloth down the line because that laptop picks up fingerprints like crazy. So the Starbook Mark V is made out of black anodized aluminum and it looks stunning, but that black finish is a fingerprint magnet. It will definitely need some polishing every once in a while to not look dirty. The device itself is 14 inch with dimensions comparable to my own Slimbook Pro X14. The chassis is custom designed by Star Labs and it's a good one. It's sturdy with just the tiniest flex in the middle of the keyboard deck and no shade on the magnesium alloy used on most Clevo or Tongfeng laptops, but aluminum just feels more hefty and solid, it just feels higher quality somehow even though it does add 400 grams to the weight of the laptop and you can definitely feel it when it's in your bag. Now that design just really works for me. It's sturdy, it's beautiful, the hinge is super solid and even though it has like some amount of flex on the keyboard, it really doesn't have much on, on the top and bottom sides. It just, it's just a nice laptop to look at and to use. Now it does fail the one-handed opening test though, it moves all over the place. So branding is also super minimal with the Star Labs logo on the back and that's it. No stickers, no logo on the bezels, it's clean and simple. And it's also super easy to open up with 10 Phillips screws that give you access to the RAM and SSD if you want to replace them. Now they even have a complete disassembly guide that you can download online and it doesn't void your warranty if you open it up, which is really cool. So my review unit came with 32 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel Core i7 1165G7 and 240 gigabytes of SSD, or as they call it, a star drive. But I, I'll talk about it in a moment. I also got an Intel XE graphics card in my model, but if you go for the i3 processor, you'll only get an Intel UHD G4 graphics chip or integrated graphics. So my unit comes with a UK keyboard, but you can get a US, Spanish, French or Nordic keyboard. The selection is relatively limited compared to other resellers, probably because they design their own laptops and they can't stock up on every part and every deck that they would need to make sure that they could serve every single consumer. In terms of choices, you can get either an i3 1115G4 or an Intel i7 1165G7. You can get from 8 to 64 gigabytes of RAM, up to one terabyte of SSD, and a pre-installed distro of your liking, choosing from Ubuntu, Mint, Manjaro, MX Linux, Zorin, Elementor iOS, and a lot of others. So note that choosing Ubuntu or Mint does not give any money back to the developers, probably because Star Labs hasn't reached an agreement with these distro developers. Other options do give back a percentage which is not disclosed, to the developers of the distro, so it's always nice to support them. Mine came, of course, with Elementor iOS, because why use the rest when you can have the best? There, did I fill the Elementor iOS hater bingo card? 
So what's also really interesting is that they actually let you choose between the AMI BIOS or Core Boot, which my model has. So in terms of IO, the, the port selection is pretty limited, but it's decent. You've got a very small barrel charger, you've got USB 3.0, you've got HDMI and Thunderbolt 4. And on the other side, you've got a headphone jack, you've got a USB 3.0 again, a USB 2.0, which I don't really know what it's doing there. Why is it not a 3.0? USB 2 just should not be on devices anymore. And you also get a micro SD card slot, which is fine, I guess, but a full size SD is generally more useful. Now the screen is a TFT panel, but before you run to the comments to say how awful that technology is, I can't say I noticed a difference with the IPS panels I have used in the past. The viewing angles are excellent at 178 degrees, colors are accurate with 100% covering of sRGB, and the anti-glare coating means severely reduced reflections. So this means I can use it in my sunroom surrounded by windows. You still get reflections, but they are diffused instead of being sharp. Now the brightness goes up to 400 nits, which is pretty standard for a laptop. It's not as amazing a display as the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro or the Slimbook Executive, but it's really not a bad panel at all. Typing on the Starbook is nice. Their keyboard is a chiclet design with large keys, well spaced. The keys have pretty shallow key travel, but they're relatively soft at the end, so it doesn't feel like you're typing on glass. The keys are stable, they actuate reliably, and it's generally a good typing experience. Now you even get a super key which is just written super. They're not trying to cram a logo for their own brand or a logo for the distro or a tux symbol which is cartoony and doesn't look cool. I think it's pretty good, I think it's a good idea. Now some prefer calling this key the meta key instead of the super key, but I wouldn't use any device where meta is written on it. Another nice touch as well, if you combine the function and lock key, you can switch on the fly between the function keys actually performing a function like changing the volume, the brightness, or you can use them as F1, F2, F3, whatever, if you prefer that. The keyboard is backlit with only two levels of brightness, but that's more than enough to distinguish the keys in the dark. Now there is no light to tell you if caps lock is on or off, which I'm not a big fan of, and the squished arrow keys top and bottom that are stacked on top of each other I don't really like either, but that's, that's a nitpick. The rest of the keyboard is really, really cool. The trackpad is full reflective glass, which means it will take up fingerprints really, really fast, but it looks cool with your screen sometimes reflecting in it. It's very nice. It feels super smooth, especially for the trackpad gestures in elementary OS. It's very precise and the click feels super solid, not plasticky or like it makes the chassis move. Now, the speakers are better than most I used on most Clevo or Tongfang designed laptops, but they are still just barely okay. They, the bass is decent, but as soon as you go into the highs, the chassis will start trembling and you're gonna hear that, that teeny echo resonance vibration thing that is just the mark of not great speakers. Now there are speaker grills, but the sound doesn't come out of them. They're side firing. Actually, these speaker grills are even fake. They're just printed on, but they aren't real holes. Real holes. Let's, let's never use that combination of words ever again. But yeah, that, that's kind of weird. Why would you print like fake speaker grills on the side if your sound is actually firing from those slits back there? I have no idea, but I guess that's a design choice. The microphone though is really bad. It picks up sound from the fans when they're running, it picks up trackpad clicks, key presses, and the sound is super tinny. Laptop mics tend to be really crappy, but this one is really subpar. The webcam is also really basic, like most other laptops. It, it kinda even felt worse, with a softness and a lot of noise on the image. It's supposed to be 720p, but it felt 480p for me. I, I thought that with the build quality and the custom design chassis and the parts that they picked, they would put a little bit more effort to have better parts than what you can find in a $400 laptop, but yeah, I was, I was a bit disappointed in that aspect of the laptop. Now let's see how that thing performs. On Geekbench 5, the i7-1165 G7 got 1667 in single core and 4700 in multi-core. Now the i3 that you can get is a dual core CPU, so I would not recommend that. The i7 is a four core CPU, which is okay. It, you're not going to do video editing or heavy stuff on this Ultrabook anyways. I would have preferred an AMD option with an eight core CPU, but 
that's that's not a bad piece of silicon the i7 is actually okay it can turbo boost up to 4.8 gigahertz and the performance has been really good for everything that i threw at it now it's also not a noisy laptop the fan rarely runs at full speed and when it does it's not helicopter like although there is a bit of whine barely audible now that star drive ssd is interesting it almost got 3 gigabyte per second in sequential read speed and 2.8 gigabytes per second in write speed now while that's pretty good it's also far from their stated 7 gigabyte per second read and 6.5 gigabyte write now i could not reproduce the advertised speeds on their website but after checking out with them it's because my review unit got a pcie gen 3 ssd and those speeds are for pcie gen 4 so it's normal the speeds i got are good and they are as advertised for a pcie gen 3 drive now the battery life is good really good while I was testing the laptop, running Geekbench, KDiskMark, running YouTube videos, installing applications, running my updates, all on the Wi-Fi and with brightness up to 50%, the laptop endured for 6 hours. Now for less power hungry tasks, if you skip the installing, the benchmarking, I think you can probably make it last for 7 hours or so. On Wi-Fi at 50% brightness, it's, it's not bad battery life, it's a 65 watt hour battery which I think can hold on for that long. Now the entry level model with its core i3 and 8GB of RAM is enough for anything basic a user might want to do and it goes for 959 euros which is okay for such a well designed ultrabook. The review unit I got retails for 1323 euros or 1392 euros without a discount. All these prices include the value added tax as well. Now this laptop feels really nice. It's well designed, it's well built, it's got a great chassis, good keyboard, good trackpad, the screen is is okay the board selection is good it's a good device but it's really let down like most other laptops by its webcam speakers and mic we're in 2022 we're in in covid city people work from home having a webcam that doesn't make you look like a human being having a mic that sounds like you're talking in a server room and having speakers that can't really play audio without vibrating the chassis is not acceptable anymore and that's not specifically targeted at Star Labs. All manufacturers need to realize this. These parts you can't cheap out on anymore. You have to include good quality webcams, good quality speakers, and good quality mics. And this laptop doesn't have that, unfortunately. Now, still, I think Star Labs deserves more attention. They're, to my knowledge, the only Linux OEM that designs their own chassis for laptops. System76 doesn't, Slimbook, Tuxedo, Entroware, they don't design their own laptops. These guys do, and I think it's a good advantage. Now, what I'd like to see, because that's what I'm interested in, is a more pro or gamer-oriented model with their own custom-designed chassis, the same keyboard and trackpad quality, and better internals. Maybe a dedicated GPU, an AMD CPU, a little bit more ports, a little bit more power basically for a portable laptop. I think that would be a really amazing thing if they could swing that. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't stay to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, do all the things that you need to do for YouTube to not choose what you're going to watch instead of you choosing what you're going to watch. And if you want to help support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members both get access to the same perks. You get a weekly Patreon cast where I rant about technology, Linux and personal things and you get the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I see you or you'll see me in the next one. Bye!